roasted turkey breast and root vegetables in an Instant Pot. And not just any Instant Pot, but the Instant Pot Duo Crisp and Air Fryer, which makes that combination of pressure cooker and air fryer a perfect combination for this recipe. We're going to roast that turkey breast that I've had brining overnight for 24 hours. And, and we're going to roast it, and then we're going to pressure cook the root vegetables just slightly. I've got everything from carrots, parsnips, uh, turnips, rutabaga, butternut squash. It's going to be a real good one. And it's going to be perfect for Thanksgiving. Or, or any time, to be honest with you. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Let's cook the perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, so here is our five pound bone-in turkey breast that's been in this solution for 24 hours. And I'm using Alton Brown's uh, that he has on his website or his YouTube channel. Uh, I'm using his recipe, and I'm going to link to that because he not only tells a recipe, but he tells a little bit of, about what happens when you brine, and it's some really good information. Now, I don't always brine. I have before. I've done it both ways. You can tell a difference, but take my word, it's not a deal breaker. If you don't want to go through this step, which adds a whole day, uh, then don't, by all means. But Right now, I'm fixing to put that video in, and, and I, I, I recommend watching what Alton Brown has to say about it. It does explain it a little bit, and it'll show you everything, and it'll show you what I did last night. So, y'all hold up. I'm fixing to drop that in right about here. Okay, so <clears throat> here is the turkey breast with the wrapper still on it. So you can see what I was talking about, the 6% uh, water retained from chilling process. It doesn't have the solution that a lot of turkeys have injected in them. So th that way, you, if you're trying to brine a turkey, in my opinion, or inject it or anything, you don't want one that has something already in it, you know, a 20% solution or even, you know, is even 10% solution. You don't want it in there because you're trying to get something else there. All right, and here's everything Alton Brown uses in his recipe, his turkey brine recipe. And uh, I'm going to make it identical to his, except I'm doing a half batch. And that's why you see half the salt he uses and half the vegetable broth. And I'm going to do the same thing with everything else here. Now, I will say, he mentioned it in his video that if you can't find this, it's okay to go without it. Well, and it is, but, I mean, that if you're going to go to the trouble, and I found this, it was easy to find, I'm getting to getting that. It was in, just where he said, in the spice section of my uh, grocery store. I think that the ginger and this allspice adds a flavor that you can taste somewhat at the end. So, I, I, I'm going to all this trouble, I'm going to take it all the way. <laughs> Now the other thing I'm, or one of the things I'm going, or the only thing I'm going to do different from him, other than a half batch, is I'm going to put it all in here, get it boiled, get it done like I'm supposed to, but I'm not going to add water. I think he adds water. All I'm going to add is ice. I'll set this in the sink and I'll fill it up with cold water around it to right here, obviously enough not to go over in it, and then I'll just add ice until the concentration gets to double. You know, you're supposed to put, I'm going to use a half a gallon of this and then a half a gallon of water or so. And I'm just going to do that with ice. And as the ice melts and cools it, I'll be able to track how much water I've actually added. And it'll help cool it down real fast so I can get this in there sooner. Because we want to get this brine tonight and cook it tomorrow night. So, I'll bring you back in a minute and show you how it looks when I'm done with it. So, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, there is the brine solution that hasn't been diluted after I boiled it. I put it in the sink and ran cold water up to about right here and stirred it and drained that water off after it warmed up a little bit and ran it again. And within 30 minutes, I had it at this right here, which is 70 degrees. And that's from boiling. So, I mean, it works real, real well. Now we're going to add the, the ice and bring it, because you can see, I think you can. I'm not sure. I, I looked back on one of the videos a while ago and you couldn't see what I thought you could, which are these divisions in this pot that show me what quarts I have. And I'm right at two quarts, which should be right for the vegetable broth I put in. And I'm gonna add enough water, I mean enough ice, I'm sorry, to get it to a little over four. And then I'll add the turkey. That way I know my solution's right. So here we go. And I'm gonna have to get a little more ice, but I'll do that and I'll be right back. But you get the idea. So once I get that up and I'll stir it around a little bit, we're going to make that uh, safe, safe stuff to put a turkey in. By the way, tonight, as I'm doing this, World News is reporting 
salmonella. So, I mean, it's real. That's why I got this out. You do have to pay attention to it. It's something, I'm not usually the one that preaches about uh, salmonella, and I'm not going too much longer right here. Just make sure, I always try and work on a surface I can take outside, spray with Clorox, and wipe down everything else. So, even your devices you hold, even things you set things on. I could go on and on, that's why I don't. I'm not telling you how you should research it yourself, but I'll be back. Okay, there is everything ready to go, and uh, you, it, you can see it's, it's plenty cold. It's 28 degrees. That salt is making that ice melt, so it, you know, it, it gets colder than 32. That's, that's what's happening. Now, I'm fixing to put that breast in there, and I may have to add some water, but if I do, it won't be much, I don't think. I'm going to leave this in. A lot of people recommend it. I, I can't remember if Alton did, but anyhow, you don't pull that out, it gives problems, so I'm going to leave it in. I'm a, I wish it wasn't there, but it is. I'm going to put it breast side down, just like that, and I'm going to put this lid on, that goes in the refrigerator, and we are, it'll be ready tomorrow, and we'll have a brined turkey to put in the Instant Pot Duo Crisp, so I'm going to take y'all back to what will be tomorrow at the time you're fixing to enter, and anyhow, be there, see y'all then. <laughs> okay, so this turkey came with rib meat. And all I'm going to do is trim it off because I want it to lay flatter and there's not a lot of meat there, but you could also use it. I mean, my grandmother used to cook a whole chicken for her dressing. So, I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with it as far as uh, well, making stocks or dressings and all that stuff. But all I want to do is cut right here and just come right across this. And I might have should have done that from the other direction and pop that bone right there and then cut that out of there and i might need a knife for that because some of that skin that honestly i'd like to leave that i didn't peel back and i'm going to do that somehow there we go i'm going to leave that skin because i'll wrap it around a little bit and then anyhow like i said you don't have to throw that away it's just holding the it's holding the turkey up further than i want it so now i can make that turkey lay down now the next step was i pointed out that thing see it gets lost <laughs> So there it is. I'm not going to pull it out because it's recommended not to. And this is a place for the juices to come out. We're about to get uh, the... i got to move some of this stuff. And then we're going to get the Instant Pot up here a little closer. And we're going to start this. I'll be back. Okay, so... And I may not have mentioned it, but when I pulled it out of that brine solution, I rinsed it off real well and I dried it real well with paper towels. And I've already seasoned it and got it ready to go. Now, I'm using ghee which is nothing but clarified butter in a, in a can. And it has a, a butter taste. And I've already used it a couple of times on some stuff. And I really like it. I think it's going to be real well on here, but we're about to find out. And I, I, put, I put salt and pepper on both sides. So what we're about to do right now, I've got this trivet in here, like this right here, with these legs down. And that's just to raise it up a little bit because I considered using, you know, some type of vegetable under it to hold it up. But I wanted air to flow around it because my intention is not to flip this breast. I'm going to cook it breast side up, the entire cook. So I'm going to let that sit just a minute and kind of let those spices and that stuff uh, or those salt and pepper to kind of adhere a little better. We're going to get this thing to 350 degrees and get this, the roasting part of the breast started. I'll be right back. All right, so a couple of last minute details that I haven't mentioned, I don't think, is I'm using the meter probe, and uh, there it is. It's number one. I'm going to set up a cook on it, and uh, I'll tap to set that up for uh, poultry. Just a minute. But that's going to give me an idea of where we're at in the, in the center. And I considered put, pulling that out and sticking it there, but that was going to put too much of an angle. So I've got it pretty much what I think is uh, really close to the center, but I never go by just it. I got my thermopen, as you all know if you watch my videos. Next thing is chicken broth. I'm going to pour that in the bottom of this container. Now, one is, it's, I think it'll help keep it moist. I think it, a lot of times when you're cooking them in an oven and they're in a pan, I always add some kind of liquid. So I'm doing the same thing here, and it'll help with cleanup. So all I'm going to do is put maybe half of this right here. I just want it to come up a little way in the bottom, about right there. And that also help maybe with the gravy if you want to make gravy or something, you know. So right now, I'm going to get this lid on. 
I'm going to get it set on roast. I'm going to use a roast feature, and I'd already set it to 350. And I'm not sure on time. We don't care about time because we're going to be going by this temp. So I'm going to set that at somewhere around an hour. Well, you have to go to an hour. All it, go, all it does, in fact, I didn't realize that, an hour is as high as you can go. Going to hit start. Once it preheats, it'll start counting down. By that time, I'll have this set up, and we'll set that in. I'll be right back. Okay, we've got a countdown right now. It's at uh, it's starting to count time, so we know it's preheated, which didn't take long at all. And I'm going to set this in, and I'm going to try and show y'all how it looks in there, but I'll have to move the camera around. But right there. And everything looks good. And I'm going to pick the camera up and just show you what it looks like, like this right here. And you can see it fits in there well. And like I said, that's a five pound bone in turkey breast. I'm going to put the lid back on. It should start right back up. And it did. So now all we're doing is watching this right here, <clears throat> which is the meter. Uh, the meter probe that's in there, we're at a 47 degree internal right now. I've set the target for 165, so it'll tell me at around 155 to pull it out. Whether we will or not, I don't know, but it always compensates for carryover cooking. But we're going to be going, once we get that point, we'll be switching over to Thermapen. So, see y'all back in a minute. Okay, so we're down to two minutes left <clears throat> in the hour. We're up to 144. It's got a 341 ambient. Like I said, this is usually really close to their temps right here. Here's what I've got cut up. We're going to uh, pressure cook these for like a minimal amount of time. And I'm going to show you everything I've got in there, which is a, a purple onion, a white onion, or and a carrot, parsnip, uh, red potato, white potato, a... Uh, I don't know if you can even see it all, but a turnip, some mushrooms, and a rutabaga. And then some uh, thyme, rosemary, and parsley, and a, a, just a little bit of those. So anyhow, that's what's in here. And I just kind of, there's no measurement. I, you can see I cut a half an onion and stuff like that. So that's what's there. So as soon as that gets a little bit closer to one, in fact, it's going to go to seconds right now. I'm going to go ahead and add time. I'm going to add another 10 minutes. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like at one hour. So I'm about to raise the lid and try and get a light a little bit better right here. And let's see. Well, it looks good. There's no doubt. In fact, I'm going to look at it a little bit better. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the way that looks. That'll make an excellent turkey presentation or turkey breast. Like I said, for you know, when it's just two or four people, it's crazy to cook a whole turkey to begin with. And uh, this is a, I think cooking a breast by itself might have a lot of advantages. So I'll be back when that gets a little closer to our 155 mark right there. Be back. Okay, so with three minutes remaining and we're at 156 internal, I'm going to start taking readings with the thermopen. And let's see where we're at. Uh, the pop-up timer on the, the blue pop-up timer has came up. So let's see, right here, and everything looks good. 170, 168. All right, I got, I saw 164 was the lowest number I saw right there. And I think that's going to be pretty accurate. And I'm going to try and get one more just to make sure. Because we're maybe fixing to pull this right here out. Well, there's 158, 159. I saw 159. We'll, we'll let it go the other three minutes. It'll be fine from that point. So, we'll let that three minutes finish. And I'll be right back. All right, we got 15 seconds left. And I did forget to mention my butternut squash that is in there. And I, I tried to cut everything up to that similar size. And uh, that's the only thing that I guess I forgot to say. So let's get this turkey breast out. And we're going to let it rest a little while. Well, we're going to let it rest while those uh, vegetables are cooking. So let's see how it does. And I mean, it, it really looks, and I think it is, 
perfect. I mean, the, the skin has got some, I could hear it when I, when I poked it with that uh, probe, it sounded excellent. Now, I'm going to have a little trouble getting it off of that rack, maybe, but we'll just see right now. No, it's all right. It just didn't come out of there like I thought it would. I'm going to go ahead and put that rack back in. I just am. There's no reason not to. It's got stuff on it that I want in there. There's probably a half inch of liquid there. I'm debating on whether to add some more. So anyhow, let me look into that. And I may put a little more chicken broth. And I'll show you what's in there right quick so you'll know too. And there's what's in there now. And that came from what little bit of broth I put in there and from that turkey. So that's probably plenty of liquid. And I got a feeling I'm going to leave it just like that. So anyhow, I'll be right back. Okay, I decided just to add some more. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I'm not using it for gravy or anything. So I don't want to burn light. So I'm going to add a little more liquid. And uh, it's not going to hurt anything I'm putting in there. Now, I'm just going to put this in there just like that okay so i decided to cut in to the video right here because this is the next night and i wanted to explain a few things i didn't mention in the video and some things that happened are not things that happened but what took place while cooking the vegetables and uh i also want to say a little bit about this device versus a ninja that i'm going to get to in just a second but the potatoes i would have if i had to do over again and i almost did do this video over again i would have cut those at least in half or maybe just started with regular potatoes or but i love these little things but they're hard to hold on to but you can see the butternut squash i used is maybe a half inch diameter i wish it was a little bigger but i found butternut squash if you take the fruit itself it's a job to cut up so now when i use butternut squash if i can find it this way I do. That's how I use it, and I kind of recommend that. But I would have cut this into closer, at least, like I said, cut it in half, because the potatoes took a little longer than uh, the rest of the vegetables, and some of them a little bit overcooked. But that being said, I did 15 minutes on those vegetables. Had I cut those in half, and had I done the video over again, I would have went to probably, and I'm guessing here, you'll have to try it yourself, but 10, 12 minutes. And, uh, but the thing is, I hated to do it over That turkey was fantastic. Well, it would have been a job to do the turkey. It takes a while to do that brining. And I say in the beginning, it's not that big of a deal, or maybe I make it sound that way. And, and I'm not going to say it's not, but let me say, this is something I wish I had more uh, talked about in the video. That, that turkey was absolutely as good as any I've ever cooked. I may do way more brining. I may do it different, and that's because... Normally, I cook whole turkeys, I spatchcock them, and I cook them on my green egg. And I have brined them before, but I always, and sometimes I inject them, but I always put a lot of, I usually use something, you know, some type of seasoning besides salt and pepper. Well, let me say, that salt and pepper worked perfect. The brine solution, you can tell, is in the meat. It, it gives the meat a whole different texture. It's a, I don't really know how to explain it. It's got a better bite through, if you will, and... But the big deal is, when you bite through that skin, the skin is where a lot of that flavor's at that works excellent with that salt and pepper. I was so impressed. And I've also heard this before, I've never noticed it, but I ate that turkey again tonight and reheated. It was as good almost as it was the last night. So, on the bars of recipe, cut the potatoes in half. You may have to toy with that time a little bit, but I promise you that'll be... In fact, it'll be one we'll do here. I'll do whole turkeys here. I always do. We have many, many people. But a lot of times we have small gatherings like just immediate family. This will be, this will be what it is. I, I guarantee you that it wasn't... I'm anxious for my family to taste that bird. I am anxious. I think they're going to love it. Now, on this device, everybody's asking me, and I'm not going to stay on it long because I'm trying to put together something to where... I can give you a more in-depth, by, by far, uh, review of, of, of what I think between it and the Ninja Foodie. Mainly it's that lid. That, that's pretty much it. The, the devices work almost uh, 
identical. You, you could take the recipe that, we're, that I'm doing right here and put it in the Ninja Foodie and it would do the same. It would be excellent. I, I mean, it wouldn't be a bit of difference. It'd do almost everything exactly. I think he would do it exactly. The Ninja Foodie has a little larger basket, so it might work a little better. Now, there's some things. I've done 12 recipes in this so far. I've got nine of them up, I think. Or this is make nine or ten. And uh, they've all been excellent. I've got a few issues on some things that I'm working on, and I hope to find, you know, I'm, I'm going to perfect them before I even speak on them because there's one or two things, you know, that I want to bring up that uh, it, it, it might help your decision. The main one, though, I guarantee you, is going to be the lid design. If you store this device, I think that means a bunch. If you leave it on your counter, it, it even means a bunch then. I'm going to get off of this. I just want to let you know I am trying to work on it and I am trying to come up with an answer and I hope to have all my answers answered so I can confidently tell y'all. Anyhow, here you go. I'm going to throw you back in the video right in the middle of where I cut off and it'll be where I take the vegetables out at 15 minutes. So here you go. Okay, so the pin just dropped on 15 minutes worth of cooking on the vegetables. So I gotta see if they're done. First thing I'm gonna pull out probably is one of these potatoes. Let's stab one and make sure they're all right. Oh yeah, the potatoes feel fine. They're plenty done. I got a feeling everything is, and I believe it is. So I'm going to, I mean, I'm actually gonna turn the warm off. I thought I was. I'll hit cancel, surely that'll do it. And uh, I'm gonna get those out, get them around the uh, turkey which has been resting now for about 20 minutes or so because I forgot to hit start a while ago. You have to hit start on this pot, so it's probably 25 minutes, but I did a 15-minute cook on those, and the turkey's still excellent. It looks great. It's still warm so or hot. I'm going to get those out, get them around there, and I'll be right back. The, the root vegetables are done. The potatoes are done. Uh, everything seems to be pretty close to perfect. You, you little less time on the vegetables and that would give you a little you know a little less rest time and I got a little extra because I forgot to hit start you have to hit start on this unit so anyhow let's see what the turkey looks like and we're going to slice it up whoops and I'm not going to do anything pretty we're just going to go through the motions right here and uh, show you what it looks like all the way down and I got a feeling it's going to be uh, perfect. Uh, the highest I saw on that particular, on the on my uh, meter block was 169. I saw it get all the way to 169. So, I mean, that, that is, there was nothing wrong with it all the way. And that, I'm telling you, that, you can tell by looking, that's a good looking turkey. And, and for two or three people, or, you know, honestly, probably up to about six people, this is way better than cooking a whole turkey and you can control the temp a lot better because you can't get a whole turkey to where you need this temp at and also get the thighs and all where you need them so down near the bone i'm going to take a bite of that and it is as good as it gets and i'll even show you another piece right quick uh this one's pretty much mine <laughs> we saved that half for tomorrow but that's where my meter probe was, but you can see that is, I don't know how you would beat that. And uh, that's a roasted turkey and uh, nothing wrong with anything I got here. I've already tried a couple of the vegetables to make sure they were done. And they are, if anything, they're a little far. I probably could have pulled that time back just a little bit. And I think it all has to do with what size you know, you cut them to. And I tried to cut them to what the uh, butternut squash was, which it was fairly small. So, but the potatoes, another thing, you know, it's, you got to keep it all in mind. Some of it was done. I did a little, I did a, a, I think I did eight minutes to start with, you know, and then stuff like, I think I did eight to start with and seven on the second. So I did an eight minute cook and then a seven minute cook. So a total of 15. And uh, the potatoes were not done at the eight. Now, I may be backwards on that. Maybe I did seven to start with, but anyhow, it doesn't matter. It's a perfect way to cook a turkey, especially for 
three or four people, or I keep saying three or four, <laughs> you can see what you can feed there, how many sandwiches you can fix. I mean, that's what we do with turkey a lot of times. I see one, you know, I see... I see four sandwiches right there, and there'll be four. So, I mean, you do the math. You know how much you eat. But anyhow, hey, thanks for watching my video. And uh, I think you'll find this to be a really good method to cook a turkey for a small, you know, small gathering. If you ain't got a 15 people, you don't need a whole turkey. But anyhow, y'all come back to see me. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I love y'all all. I'll put my big head right here. <laughs> And y'all come back to see me. Bye-bye.